Chop it down the weeds. <laughs> I can't believe it's going through this. This is proper big weeds. It's just chomping its way through. <laughs> that is amazing. Look at that. Wow. That is incredible. So this is the Farm Track 25G. It is the first commercially available purely electric tractor available in the UK. This really is designed for ground keepers, you know, like people who would mow a big a grass, like a cricket pitch or a football pitch, something like that. It's not a proper big farming tractor, but they are clearly going to come. That is what we're going to see soon is big, heavy, heavy duty, 250, 500 horsepower electric tractors. Definitely the way forward. You, yes you, we know you love the Everything Electric show, so why not come to one of our six live shows in 2023, starting in Sydney, Australia on March 11th and 12th. Get your tickets from fullycharged.live now. So Adam, thank you for a start, letting us come on your farm and drive a tractor around it. It's really, really, really nice to see you again. I mean, I'm just wondering what you think of this, because you know, you've had a go in it now. Electric tractor, first of its kind in the country, yeah, well, I have to say I'm impressed. Right. You know, I think on the farm, and in fact across the whole of British agriculture, we're now looking really carefully at what our impact on the environment is. You yeah. know, what's our carbon footprint? And we're not quite sure how good or bad we are, but the electric movement into cars, and now that movement into tractors, has got to be a good thing. Yeah. This is the first one I've ever seen, performing really well, uh, amazing, you know, driving a tractor around with no engine yeah. as such. Um, but of course it's tiny. What yes. we need is scale. Our tractors are 250 horsepower, pulling great big cultivators and drills and plows. And so if we can scale this up for the right cost, yeah. then we're onto a winner. Yeah, because that's, I mean, I think that's the thing is the, the all the, the sort of challenges and complexities of having an electric car, if you live on a, you know, street where you can't plug it in, all those things, big problems. All farms now, today, there's not a farm in the country where you can't put a tractor somewhere and plug it in, basically. I think that's the, that's the one easy thing. Indeed. And incredible that you can take the plug and shove it straight into, you know, a this three is just point a three plug. Pin, this is just a three-pin plug. Amazing, really. Yeah, so you just leave it overnight, not on that. But. Incredible. But then, so the thing is, though, the, what, we, what is such a big challenge is that the power and the scale that you need to, to, to farm a farm is, because how, how many acres do you farm here? It's quite, yeah, quite so it's, a, it's 1,600 acres or 650 hectares, right. but we're in a joint venture with a neighbour. Because machines are so expensive, right. we share our machinery with a neighbour and then we contract across four other farms. So we're combining, we're harvesting or growing crops on 4,000 acres. Right. So a lot of land, yeah. and so you need a lot of kit. Yeah. And a combine harvester, there's two parked down there. They're I mean, they're massive. Huge <laughs> machines. Yes. Um, and cost, how many, do you know what, how many horsepower those are? Uh, I don't, but they co I know what they cost. They cost around 300,000 pounds each. Right. And they would be using, in the way of fuel, about 80 litres an hour. So, wow. you know, okay. a, lot, a lot of fuel. Yeah. Um, a tractor like that one over there would be using when it's at work. 60 litres an hour, so a, a litre a minute. Um, yes, that's you know, quite a lot. We're using red diesel, which has, a, you know, there's a tax subsidy on that. Right. So and red diesel will so cost So it's cheaper than you'd buy it in a, in a filling a station. Yeah. yeah, and so, and that costs somewhere in the region of 45, 50p a litre. Oh, but it's, that's what it costs you. Oh my goodness, so that's still a fair chunk. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not like it's like 2p a litre. No, that's a, no. Right. So, you know, you're so really- It's a big expenditure over a year. It's going to be a lot. Yeah. Indeed, of course. Um, but yes, if you could change the engine into a motor that's run yeah. by batteries, I, I, I can't imagine it's that complicated. No. It's about getting it at the right cost. At the right I cost. I think it is the cost mm. and the size. Because that was the thing that it was that, uh, you know, the batteries in this, this has got a 21 kilowatt hour battery, which in 2010 would have cost many thousands of pounds. It now cost a, that cost a couple of thousand quid. So that's, you know, and then you compare that with a diesel engine, same size. They make so many of them that they are cheaper still. But it's just as production ramps up, I think the cost of these, because this is almost twice as much as the diesel equivalent, same size tractor. So it's still an expensive item. So it's got a, it's got a 21, roughly 21 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, which charges on three pins, so overnight charging. You wouldn't do rapid charging on this, but it'll give you six, seven hours of, of hard work. So I've been using this thresher 
that uses a lot of energy. It's fine, it keeps going, and it doesn't half do it well, it just mashes through it. Uh, all the other controls are very similar to any tractor, so it's got all the, the, all the levers that are on either side here are to control the uh, power uh, takeoff out the back, which drives all the machinery that you might strap on it. It can tow big trailers. It's only about 21, 22 horsepower. It's not a big, powerful tractor, you know, the ma massive ones. But this is really the first iteration of this. As always, sadly and annoyingly, it costs a lot more than the diesel equivalent. So there's a diesel-sized tractor of roughly the same size as this, and that is probably £8,000 cheaper than this one, which is uh, still frustrating. So this is their first iteration of, a, uh, of this battery, of uh, this uh, tractor. But what it's proven today, it, beyond all shadow of a doubt, it's not just me saying this, Adam, proper farmer, drives tractors all the time. He absolutely loves this thing. It's so much quieter than uh, a diesel tractor. They are, by definition, kind of big, noisy industrial machines. They're not kind of domestic machines. I mean, I'll turn it on now. Now it's on. There you go. That's, oh, it's deafening. It's deafening. Now, it does have a steering pump. So that's, that's the pump that drives the, um, the power steering. So, and I put it into drive now, it's in drive now, and if I go like that, it starts to move. That's, it's as easy as that, you know. It is very, very easy to use. Uh, the annoying thing I found is when you're in reverse, it's got the proper industrial reverse noise. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> so my dad, uh, he started working in the fields with a horse. Wow. You know, pulling a cultivator or a plough and and now yeah, but he loved horses sure <laughs> he did love horses <laughs> but then we moved to the combustion engine you know yeah. then we moved to the tractor yeah. and then we've moved to this incredible precision farming with you know electronics on yeah. board but then if we can move to this yeah. with batteries and then onto automated tractors completely yeah. well for someone like my dad to have been able to understand that he's sadly dead and gone but but for him to understand that that's where you'd get to yeah must be extraordinary. Yeah, it? absolutely extraordinary because it is, I mean, it is, uh, it, it is mind boggling. But also when, because every time I talk about, or, to, or you know, fully autonomous cars or vans or delivery, you know, they're on public roads with human beings and puppies <laughs> and <laughs> children running, you know, really complicated. But you yes. put something in a field, you know, you can be pretty, and obviously it would need sensors in case there were some ramblers walking across the field. You don't want to run them over, even if you want to shout. You could just have a speaker at the front. Get off my land! <laughs> just very loud. But, you know, it's a much more controlled environment to have a track, uh, an autonomous tractor on a field. It makes so much more sense. Completely is. I mean, you know where the boundaries are, and that'll be mapped on the computer. And, yeah. and as you say, you'll still have sensors all over it. Yeah. And I think, actually, the main reason a lot of the time is to have drivers on tractors is because of health and safety. Yeah. And, but if you think of the prairie lands of Australia and America, yeah, America yeah. where there aren't any highways or footpaths and yeah. they just get these huge acreages, um, I think it could happen quite soon. Yeah, yeah. And it's also that, I think the last thing I really want to say is I just stand here, see huge areas of barn roof, which, you know, you could put solar. Well, you have put, because how much solar is on the barn over yeah, there? Yeah, so we've got 50 kilowatts. Right, 50 kilowatts. Yeah, so it's a, it's a fair, fair amount. Trump, so that's yeah. producing, I don't know, about five and a half thousand pounds worth of electricity every year. Yeah. And um, we could use that on the farm. Yeah. A lot of big farms in the UK now have got anaerobic digesters. Yeah. Um, so farm waste and, and muck and manure going into there and producing electricity. Right. Um, there's all sorts of you know pellet boilers and all these yeah. things that you can get as yeah. well as solar panels but yes why wouldn't you have a solar field yeah. up on there yeah. it's interesting that the National Farmers Union who look after British farming yeah. are, are now wanting UK agriculture to have zero uh, greenhouse emissions by 2040. 2040. So, so, so 10 ask. years before we're supposedly completely trans. That yeah. is, it is a big ask. And, and for, yeah. in, particularly in agriculture. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a place for these. Yeah. And um, so, you know, I think all farms now are using, there's a lot of consultants setting up right. it, and now to, to come onto your farm and measure your carbon footprint. Right. So what do you do in the way of fuels, pesticides, um, how, what sort of energy you're producing, what sort of energy you're using. Um, how you're managing the land, what sort of animals you've got, and working out what our carbon footprint is. And until we know what the base is, yeah. you can't measure yourself against other people. No. So what we've got to do is get that square or get that right, and then we can start making inroads into it. And by introducing electric tractors, that may that take a, a big, big chunk yeah. off it, yeah. and then we'll know we're doing the right thing. Yeah. So after actually quite a long day 
tootling around, faffing around in this tractor, it's still got 59% of its battery. I mean, basically you've exhausted. It, I'll tell you what that reminds me of is the uh, JCB electric digger that we've tried, which just could run all day. And you sort of think, oh, it's gonna run out of battery in the middle of the field. No, it isn't. It's going to, so it's, they say it'll do seven hours work. And so this has done a lot of threshing, a lot of driving around the farm all day. Uh, much more than you've seen on this show. We've been driving it all day. It's been, it's, it is truly amazing. So what we've got to hope is that this sort of thing, it's all these other peripheral areas other than just cars, you know, that these really catch on, that farmers go, because I'm, I'm saying this with a very small C, but farmers around the world tend to be quite conservative, tend to be sort of wary of change. You know, they, they live on a knife edge always, even with this farm with loads of animals and pigs and cattle and big barns, you know, they're, they're, the economics of it are very, very dicey. So they're nervous about changing the technology they use. They, they've been using diesel for decades. They know it's reliable. They know they can work with it. And so having electric uh, versions of these, uh, you know, is obviously a bit of a challenge, but it makes so much sense. If you can fuel your vehicle on your own farm, either with a wind turbine or with solar panels and with all the thing, all the technology that's now becoming available, really, really makes sense. So. You know, I think this is fantastic. It's the farm track, 25G, <laughs> four by four, four wheel drive. It's very comfy on a lumpy field. <laughs> um, you know, if I've managed to drive it that quickly, you know, I've driven tractors a bit in the past, but a long time ago. I'll tell you where they're really popular is in greenhouses. When you've got big agricultural greenhouses, you don't want to drive a diesel tractor inside. So you get one of these. So, you know, people who grow tomatoes in the Netherlands by the millions of tons, they would, they would be using these. And eventually we'll see massive electric combine harvesters and big you know, autonomous tractors, as Adam was saying. And he very generously lent me a proper farmer's cap, which I'm now wearing in honor of the great farmers of the world. That's it really. From Benborough Farm in Gloucestershire, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.